Hello, fourth graders. This is Miss K, and we are on lesson three of our um, unit five. So we're going to actually reread some of the passages from last lesson, and we're going to do some close reading. So we're going to look closely at certain sections and answer some questions. So here's the first page we're going to be looking at. It says, as a result, most geologists rejected the idea of continental drift. For decades, Wegener's hypothesis was harshly criticized. Still, a few geologists thought Wegener was on the right track. What if the driving force behind continental drift was below Earth's surface? How can you discover what lies beneath Earth's crust? Oddly enough, earthquakes helped scientists answer these questions. And then this section talked about those seismic waves and how they were similar to the rock being dropped in the water and those waves get pushed off as a result. So number one says, the author uses that word rejected to show what people thought of Wagner's hypothesis. What does this mean? So the word rejected. Number two, they also use the phrase on the right track and that means doing something right or doing something that will lead to success. So what do you think the author means when he says a few geologists thought that Wegener was on the right track? All right, here's our second part of our close reading. Earth's deepest layer is a solid inner core with very hot metal. This metal may be nearly as hot as the sun's surface. The next layer, the outer core, is also made of hot metal, but it's liquid, not solid. The mantle surrounds the outer core. The mantle is Earth's largest and thickest layer and consists of very hot, very dense rock. The rock is solid in the lower and upper parts of the mantle. In between, however, is a region where the rock is neither solid nor liquid. All right, so which part was described as solid, the inner core, the outer core, or the mantle? And which parts were described as liquid? Earth's crust is described as rocky. Does that mean it's a liquid or a solid? For scientists interested in continental drift, it was the slowly moving material in the middle of the mantle that caught their attention. Did material move, movement in the mantle contribute to crust movement too? Could this be part of the reason why continents drift? Some scientists thought so. Before they could be sure, however, they needed evidence that Earth's crust was actually moving. So they use this idiom phrase here, caught their attention. An idiom means that it's not a literal sentence. So we're not literally catching someone's attention in our hands. Um, if you're catching someone's attention, that means that they're paying attention to it. They're, it. It made them listen closely. So in the last paragraph here, right here, what are they paying attention to? Okay, clues from the seafloor. We're looking at the word revealed. So that one is right here, just this first paragraph. During the 1940s and 1950s, new technology enabled scientists to make detailed maps of the seafloor. The maps revealed long chains of underwater mountains called ocean, mid-ocean ridges. In all of Earth's oceans, there was a split or a rift that ran down the center of these ridges. The rift was like a seam in a pants leg where two pieces of fabric come together. So we're looking at this word revealed. So that means made known or brought something into view. What did the maps of the seafloor reveal? And then I'm going to have you use the word revealed in a sentence. All right, here's another paragraph we're going to look closely at. The scientists concluded that mid-ocean ridges form along huge cracks in Earth's crust. Magma beneath the crust erupts through these cracks as lava. The lava cools into basalt, creating new oceanic crusts on either side of the rift. It says you have learned to conclu that conclude means to decide something or form an opinion based on information you have. What did scientists conclude about mid-ocean ridges? So use that paragraph here to find the answer. And our last uh, section here, the theory of plate tectonics answered many questions in geology. It explained how Wegener's Pangaea broke apart. It explained how the continents have been moved, I'm sorry, have been slowly rearranged over millions of years. 
The movement of the plates also explained mid-ocean ridges, deep ocean trenches, patterns in the locations of mountains, and many other features on Earth's surface. The theory has become the cornerstone of modern geology. So your last question is true or false? Is Wegener's theory important to geologists? All right, let's do some skills. Number one, why might the Earth's mantle be the most important layer for scientists to study for understanding changes on the Earth's surface? So remember, the mantle is um, it's below the crust, so underneath the crust. Why is it important to study what's going on underneath the outer crust? We've got a quote here from the text. It says, excerpt means to cause a force to be felt or have an effect. What is an example of exerting a lot of force or effort? So I can give you an example. Um, if I were to move my desk right now, I would have to exert a lot of power to move my desk because it's very heavy. So think of something that someone could do that would cause them to exert pressure or exert energy. And then what part of speech is that? If, if the word means to cause a force to be felt, is that a noun, adjective, verb, or adverb? And our last two questions, we're going to review simile and metaphor. So here's a little poster to help you. What is a simile? And then give me an example of a simile. That is all for today. Have a wonderful day. I will see you all next time. Bye, Adams.